Well, good afternoon. Thank you for having me here. Uh, thank you, Eric and Eric, and uh, it's wonderful to be here as part of this. Uh, I'm going to be talking about the very light side of electric aviation, and that may be quite a departure, uh, having looked at some of the more massive things that are possible out there. Fred Malitke in 1973, is, as uh, Michael already told us, was the first to fly a, an electric plane that could carry a man. And that's quite, a, quite an achievement considering he was using a washing machine motor from Bosch and Varda batteries. And uh, that was fairly new technology. Uh, even more astounding, uh, 1978, the airplane on the upper uh, left there was built by uh, Dave Williams and uh, Fred Toe in England. Uh, it, it's all wood. It was solar powered. They had to set it in the sun and let it charge the batteries. Uh, very low uh, specific energy solar cells there. And in the meantime, a gentleman in America, Larry Morrow, was converting an easy riser hang glider to solar power. Same principle, very low efficiency solar cells, uh, charged batteries. Both of these airplanes were able pretty much to fly the length of their home runway. But that was 1978 and 1979. In the meantime, solar airplanes got better. Uh, the most amazing one is the one in the lower right there. That's the Sol Air II that uh, uh, Gunther Rochelle built and flew. Uh, that could maintain level flight on 755 watts. Think of that as being about 12 uh, 60 watt light bulbs. And I just want to point out, those are, the, those are the motors on the tail there. So again, this idea that you can create new configurations for airplanes, uh, very well done there. Here's Solar Riser again, you can see there. Uh, this gentleman is uh, Klaus Ullmann. I've had a chance to chat with him quite a bit. He set three world's records for speed and distance in uh, this airplane that was actually built and flown. Uh, it was built in Stuttgart. It was flown at the 1996 Air Venture here. So it goes back a few years. And Eric Raymond uh, in America in 1990 crossed America in 21 hops in a solar-powered airplane of his design. He's since crossed the Alps from uh, Germany to Italy. Uh, so quite amazing. All of this is being done with current technology. And that's what I find exciting. Uh, here's a very low efficiency electric motor. It's uh, compared to the modern brushless motors, but it's a cheap way to get in the air. It's a, it's a Lynch type motor, Cedric Lynch designed it, and uh, they put a couple of those on either side of an electric motorcycle and they won the first electric Isle of Man tourist trophy race with that lash up gave them a combined 86 horsepower. <laughs> uh, the airplane down at the bottom is a Demois Chalec. It's kind of a pun on the Demoiselle, the dragonfly that Santos Dumont built back in the good old days. And they made it out of ladders uh, initially. It was a group called APEV, which is the Association for the Promotion of Flying Ladders. Uh, the latter company in question found out they were doing this after they'd built about 150 airplanes all over France, made them stop, so now they're just made out of standard aluminum tubing sizes. But this, this is the type of motor, and it's a pancake motor because it's an axial flux 
uh, type of thing. And again, because it's a brushed motor, it's fairly low efficiency, but it's also reasonably inexpensive. And you can use the motor controller off a golf cart or something near that to control it. So simplicity is there. And the company in France, again, Electravia, which no longer deals in this, uh, actually flew this motor glider with an Electravia uh, Lynch motor in it. And they were doing well over an hour flight and everything at that point. Same kind of uh, motor is flown here in uh, something that you'll see coming up. This is Chip Irwin's Zigolo. And I found out that is not Italian for gigolo, but it's a little bird that they have over there. So, uh, In this country, Randall Fishman designed his own motor and uh, put that. It's a brushed motor again, low budget uh, in both the tricycle there and in his Model C that he flew for the first time at Oshkosh several years ago. He was the first to demonstrate su successful electric flight in America in front of hundreds of thousands of people. He sold one of the motors to a gentleman, uh, Larry Booker, Jerry Booker, in Illinois. And Jerry has been perfecting his uh, Red Tail Hawk motor glider for years. Uh, he's currently working on longer wings and everything, but again, <laughs> down here, uh, you, you can see the motor, you can see the battery pack, and uh, it's very simple, uh, just terrific design. But again, working with what we have right now, not looking for the next best thing. Elegant example of this, uh, St. Mary's College in uh, England, uh, part of the, um, oh, I can't remember what university it is, but uh, on this particular airplane, Derek Piggott, who's famous pilot, uh, flew this. Notice that each one of these is a pair of motors front and back. There's an aluminum tube between them, and that's filled with AA size batteries. <laughs> and those are just model airplane motors, about 50 bucks a piece that you go down to the local hobby shop and buy. There are 16 of them, so about $800 worth of motors. Uh, uh, one of the students designed a wireless controller, and Piggott control the speed of the motors from the cockpit. It couldn't quite take off on its own. It had to be towed up, but it could maintain levels of flight and actually climb a little when in flight. But again, taking the least possible <laughs> uh, things here and making it work. Um, here's the thing again. Uh, We'll look at this motor coming up, but this is an Eck Geiger Flytech motor, and that's on a thing called the Whoopi. And it is inflatable. You roll it up, put it in the back of your station wagon, go to the flying center, and go flying. And it's about 12,000 bucks for the whole package, which is pretty amazing. Same motor again here. Uh, this group in Alsace, France, uh, they're experimenting with currently available again things. They're using that Eck Geiger motor there, uh, using a model airplane motor here, and here you can see the folding propellers around that tail boom on uh, what's called a Sirius uh, um, ultralight glider, and then on a Swift down here. But with the solar panels on this, they're able to stay up for hours because they recharge the batteries while they're up floating around. And they get terrifically long flights out of this. So this is quite wonderful. Again, just a bunch of amateurs working with currently available materials. Uh, that little airplane there, for instance, you can buy the kit for about 25000 and another 15000 in motor batteries and everything, and you have a self-launching sailplane. Add the solar panels, and you have one that you can stay up all day in.
come now. A couple of gentlemen in Australia took an old Moyes Tempest ultralight glider. And down here you see a Plettenberg motor. That's a Plettenberg from Germany. Uh, it's about a twelve to fifteen hundred dollar motor, about seven or eight hundred for a motor controller. A uh, very small battery pack, but you can see they're running it so that they're running this prop on the tail boom here. And they've had several flights, uh, not all of which were successful. They blew the capacitor up in one case on one flight. They were over doing it a bit, and you can see the, the, the burn marks and everything there. Uh, so they're in uh, redesign at this point. Uh, here's a guy, Holiday Albrecht in uh, North Carolina. He and a team are putting a ULF-1 glider. It's a hang glider normally. You stick your feet out through a hole in the bottom of that and jump off a hill somewhere. But what they've done is uh, they decided they're too old for that, so they have put wheels on it and two electric motors, and these will be some kind of model airplane motor. Uh, they redesigned it so that it had a lot less wood structure and a lot more styrofoam. It's still going to take them a year or more to finish this. It's a very complex little airplane, but you make up for weight and time with uh, low budgets here in this case. So again, they're using what's available. Here's Brian Carpenter in Corning, California. He's holding the complete propeller and Plettenberg motor inside that spinner. And he's powering uh, this airplane, which he flies. He, he does demonstrations where he takes his hands and feet completely off the controls and the thing flies itself. It's very stable. It's the EMG-6. And uh, you can see the you can see the motor back there with the propeller out. It folds so that you can glide. He's looking at putting uh, two more motors on the wings, or even a, co a composite kind of hybrid where he would have two small gas motors out on the wings to help keep two people up in the air. And you could use this for two-seat training. Come now. There we go. Uh, here's the Plettenberg again on a stalk out from the side of a creekery. And John Luc Solier in France built this. Uh, the, creek, the, the Plettenbergs were, oh, this thing back here, a very large capacitor to keep uh, things under control with battery surges and such. But uh, this motor, again, puts out about 20 horsepower and is a twelve or $1,500 item. So he put it on a creakery, and uh, it wasn't all that great a performer. He said it climbed for the trees, which I thought was an interesting phrase. Here's a slightly larger couple of Plettenbergs that are industrial. They, they seem to be frightfully expensive and hard to come by. You'll have to do some inquiry. And my presentation, I have a whole bunch of notes and everything I'm more than happy to share with all of you. Uh, but this one here is the, uh, it, it weighs about two and a half kilograms, about five and a half pounds. It puts out around 20 horsepower. Uh, this one puts out more like 30 or more horsepower, and it's about 11 pounds. So a little more serious as, a, as an actual ultralight airplane motor. Uh, the problem is the, the, even the small one, I think, is running around $6,000, which uh, starts taking you into real airplane territory almost. Uh, here's a group in Czechoslovakia. They built this beautiful little plane called the Axel, which they pulled part of it from the PW5 molds, where this one gentleman uh, worked for that factory. You can see here they're using an Eck Geiger motor with a folding system to pop up and down. Here they used a Plettenberg motor. Originally, they used a cheap Chinese motor called a Turnigy that you can buy at your local hobby shop. 
but they're not nearly as reliable from all reports. But again, people using what's available. Here's a gentleman named uh, uh, Gerhard Wagner in Germany who is putting together this, his fourth airplane. He's done some beautiful other systems. Uh, again, you can see the propeller folding around the tail boom, uh, a 10 kilowatt electric model motor inside. And you can see again the, the folding propeller and everything. Uh, he should have that flying by next year, the way he seems to work. But here's that Eck Geiger motor, and this is really about the closest thing in this size range that you can get to what's erroneously called the plug and play system, but it has, they have their own motor, uh, they have uh, propellers, they have their own controllers, and their own battery packs. And they're all uh, linked together very, very nicely. Uh, here's Manfred Rumer. Here he's flying a trike with one, one Eck Geiger. He's got a Swift that he's flown uh, 300 kilometers at a time in with self-launch from this, which is another Eck Geiger motor. And here's a two-seat training tricycle that he has two of these motors on for launching. I haven't seen videos of that, but that'll be exciting. And again, the Eck Geiger, very much like what uh, George By just showed us, is used in this, and a gentleman in France is going to take people up to 75,000 feet. Uh, it'll cost you a few dollars. I think it's 50,000 bucks for the complete tour. Uh, it's an unpressurized airplane. It's a variation with very long wings of what uh, George and Callan Golligan in Germany are building. And it'll be exciting. But again, getting to the idea that you have solar power on your wings, a solar powered trailer that can recharge things while you're elsewhere. Uh, solar-powered hangars, all of these things make uh, totally fuel-free flying very possible in our lifetime. And there's another outfit that has a smaller motor range that I find appealing, and I'm looking at this for a project I'm thinking of, but this is a Rotex motor, not Rotax, but this is Czechoslovakian, and again, whether or not you can buy these if you're not an OEM, I'm not sure yet. Nobody's quite gotten back to me on this. But here's one on a, on a paraglider. Uh, here's one uh, just and in display. But they're very small, uh, very light, and very powerful. And one of them is used in this Archaeopteryx. Uh, this is a wonderful beautifully made composite sailplane, ultralight sailplane. Empty, it weighs about 95 pounds in its original unmotored form. With the motor, you add about 40 pounds for the motor and the batteries and everything. Uh, they zip into place with Velcro, fasten Velcro fastenings for the batteries. And back there, that you, as you can see, there's a shaft the motor snaps in place and gets held with a couple of pins, and the propeller just slides in the shaft, clicks into the motor, and um, you hook it up and go flying. And it, it's really quite beautiful. There's some, there's some videos that show that. Uh, its big problem for me is that it cost about $130,000, so probably not in my immediate future. Uh, this is the Electrifier ULS from Randall Fishman uh, with a brushless motor of his design here and uh, just test batteries and everything. But this is a beautiful little plane. And again, it's a Czechoslovakian design. And then the next thing here is an American. Uh, this is the Eagle 2000, and we're getting into the bigger motors. Uh, this is the Zero motorcycle motor, 38 uh, pounds and uh, around 40 kilowatts. 
So figure 55 horsepower or so there. Uh, that kicks that particular e-gull, as he calls it, uh, with 170 pounds of batteries behind the pilot. Uh, Marshall and I have both seen this fly, and he's getting around a 1,500 foot a minute rate of climb and a very reasonable cruise speed, at least in the ultralight range. Uh, this motor is designed partly by Thomas Senkel, who was one of the E-Volo developers, and uh, that's being built by Joby now and is going on these. So it'll be interesting to see again how, how accessible these are. One of the hard things I've found is that not all these motors are available immediately. And quite often you have to be an original equipment manufacturer. Uh, here, here's a group from Slovenia again, and this is their nose-mounted motor. You see Gary Osaba standing there in front of a, a silent motor glider with that. Uh, that tiny little three-foot prop seems to do just fine. They're getting 600 foot a minute rate of climb out of these things. And again, it's an ultralight sailplane, so it's reasonably light. And one notch up, and this is getting out of my territory, but that same kind of electric motor on the nose with a two-stroke gas engine to help charge up the batteries and keep it going in flight. And that's going to be a two-seater that they're bringing out. They have already displayed it at Arrow a couple of times, so it should be flying very soon. And finally, going back to Mike uh, Friend's item, uh, the little stinger here, this, this is without the hybrid. This is just a gas engine up here or an electric. I'm not sure. No, I think this is the gas. But again, uh, it shows that a light, small airplane can use electric power. It doesn't have to be a motor glider. And here's an example. This is uh, Jean-Luc Solier in his MC-30. It's a column band designed airplane. Now, reflect on this. This airplane was designed by the guy who designed the Concorde that's sitting out on the ramp outside. So, <laughs> quite a character. And Jean-Luc has set several records. He's got a new motor in this, and uh, he's done 151 miles an hour already with this little airplane. Structural weight on that airplane is a whole 98 pounds without engine or anything else. So uh, shows what can be done. Now, the Duck Hawk here is designed by Greg Cole in Bend, Oregon, and Jean-Luc has put a... Uh, possibly Rotex motor, he won't say right now. And he's going to fly that thing in stages across the Atlantic heading toward America and then fly it nonstop going back. And that'll be on electric power. That's his plan anyway. And wish him luck. And anyway, here's Randall Fishman with his little ULS. These are the stainless steel battery boxes that uh, the FAA likes. And he did that on his own and came up with this. Uh, he uses a flow-through process here where it's kind of active. The air gets taken in at the leading edge, and the faster you go, the more air blows through that battery pack to keep those cool. And an alternative I found in Portland at a local bike shop that I, that I found I liked uh, it's a phase change material wrapped around your batteries. So you put your batteries into this. Uh, hotter the batteries get if they start to go into thermal runaway, and that chills them out and is a, is a stopgap, perhaps. So it's an interesting approach. It's stuff like that we do have to consider, unfortunately. Uh, finally, I just want to give a tribute to Freddie Toe and tell about something I'd love to see us do, because I think it's a low-budget approach that could get kids involved. Uh, might be for the athletically aspiring among us. Uh, this airplane right here is rolled up on his car. See a little English sedan. And that's the team that helped build it. They 
And here it is flying. It's a hundred foot across, a hundred foot wingspan called the Phoenix. Uh, the guy is pedaling like crazy because it's human powered. Uh, Freddie found that the thing was so flexible and the wings bent so much and everything. First off, it was great crash protection. They crashed it several times and just bounced, basically. The, the, the other thing, though, was that he had the first fly-by-wire airplane. He used radio control servos on, uh, you can see all along there, all along the back of the wing and on the rudder vaders underneath and down below, and uh, controlled it that way. And the cool thing was the pilot could pedal like crazy, concentrate on keeping it up, and a guy on the ground could use a little radio control system to control the airplane. <laughs> that has to be a weird feeling if you're a pilot and you're not totally in control. Uh, this is a design he sent me a few, about last year sometime, but it, it's a flying wing that would have uh, human power possibilities. But I'm looking at this as one next th thing. They're going to have, by the way, another meeting of their human-powered flying group for the British group. And here's Airglow, which is one of the most amazing airplanes. It's, it's flown for miles and miles at times on human power. What I would like to suggest is we go back to something like the bionic bat. Paul McCready and his sons did that. They went 30 miles an hour with a hybrid human electric power. They used little Astro uh, model airplane motors. And right now we have a whole series of these bike motors that are in the hub. They combine the motor, the controller, the battery, and feedback to your smartphone. And so that there are about five of these. I've got these all in the notes. What if we had a contest for human electric hybrid airplanes? It would be a low budget kind of thing because the whole airplane weighs less than 100 pounds. Uh, you're not going to have a lot of money in it. It's just a thought, but one I'd like to leave you with. And in the future, we might have these wonderful things like this. Uh, this is what I'm taking off with, and it may sound totally counterintuitive. It's a Legal Eagle XL. XL stands for extra large, so it fits big pilots like me. Uh, it allows weight and balance to work out. But our biggest problems are going to be finding a good controller for each motor and creating the best possible batteries. And then our challenge will be to integrate these into a reliable platform for our future use. Anyway, thank you very much. You've been very kind.